for everywhere. Thank God for Jesus. Um, we we want to conclude on conflict resolution. Remember the 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 whole um, that whole idea of this week. Uh, I see now has been uh, preparing us for um, relationships um, simply because uh, we cannot be here without them, and um, the church should lead, be in front of things. Um, like I cannot see how the church shouldn't have the best relationships on earth when you consider the amount of love required out of us as well as the amount of sacrifices required out of us. Um, I mean, you know, the, uh, the Lord is not telling the world as a whole to bless them that curse them and to do good to them that despitefully use them. And he's not telling the world as a whole to turn the other cheek. And so he puts a great demand on us to uh, to humble ourselves, um, not just to get beat up so you'll know, but that um, the love of Christ can show and that we take away the devil's advantages. And so... Um, you know, for two people to curse each other out or hate each other won't allow the love of God to flow. And so the church has to lead um, in the in areas where um, where the, the light can shine. Um, I'm not one of those Christians who believe that for uh, my light to shine, I have to be in the darkest of places. And I'm using that as an excuse to go to the club and, you know, to go to certain places because, you know, so the God's light can shine. It, it, um, that, that, you know, that, that's not what I'm talking about. But, you know, but the light of God must shine. And then as church is required to lead the way and judgment will, be, will begin first in the house of the Lord. Um, having said that, uh, I do want to say to you before we uh, plunge into our night, um, you know, to um, to let your pain work for you. Um, 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 like a lot of things that have brought us into conflict, um, it, um, the pain that, that came with it, um, you know, uh, without pain. Now, I said before, pain can be your best friend. Uh, had it not been for pain, uh, someone would not have known to go get a, a certain area of their body checked and they caught something early um, because of the pain, because of pain, uh, you know, pain was to them something they didn't want. But at the same time, if you ask me, it became a friend uh, because it says something is not right here. And so pain is not always to be looked upon in a negative fashion, uh, almost like a fever. When people spend time treating fever and they don't understand it's symptomatic and that it is a, a sign something else is going on. Yeah, you can treat a fever all day long, but it may not have anything. It may, I mean, have you done anything about the ear infection? you know, or whatever is causing the fever. Uh, you treat the fever, but at the same time, when you deal with what's causing it, you have just eradicated the fever. And so, um, and so, you know, you let your pain work for you. Um, uh, without pain, uh, it actually it was pain that drove me into being a, uh, a licensed real estate agent. And there was pain that uh, that um uh, that made me seek out you know how to how to be a, a you know cert a certified trauma and memory you know uh, counselor or a uh, body as healer uh, counselor or a, a grief counselor uh, it was pain that uh, that pushed me to be a short sale and a foreclosure uh, um, uh, or have expertise in that area uh, pain drove me to uh, become a mental health uh, mental health first aider uh, all of these were introduced to me in pain or out the, or as i was coming out of pain or or in the midst of pain and and so you, are, it, you now some things are uh, you know uh, a doctrine in theology or you know things of that nature that was going to be 
uh, because of the call. Now understand something. What you do you know, or pursue, um, let's say here, it has nothing to do with like sometimes, uh, I mean, they, they work for each other, but like if I never became these things, I was always going to be this. Uh, when um, when Mama prayed and Uncle Charlie prophesied and Nanny prophesied the things that God would do, it wasn't predicated on another person. It wasn't predicated on the state of Illinois. It wasn't predicated on it, 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 you know on um, you know like uh, things. It was going. This is what I'm born to do, you know, before the foundation of the world. Um, I, I won't go so far as to say that everything I have here, I was born to do. It was birthed out because of pain and wanted to know more about how to ha uh, handle self. And then uh, it turned into how to help people, um, you know, but, um, but, but this is what I do. This is who I am. And so, hey, watermelon man, hey, police man, hey, ice cream man, that, that, that's what they do. <laughs> that's not who they are. You know, that's Mr. Jones, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Willie, you know, who, you know, who's a husband or a deacon or a minister. But they but they just sell watermelon and ice cream or, you know, or, or, or he's a policeman. That's what they do. That's not who they are. And so I don't get that confused. Some of you all, you know, make sure you know, you know, what you're born to do. And then in the process, other things going to add, going to, you know, become a part of your life based on circumstances and situations. You'll meet several people today. They're nurses and doctors because, uh, you know, cancer in their family or, or something or, you know, or, or sickness in their family. And, and that's why they turn to medicine. You know, um, I uh, heard a man say he became a lawyer because of um, his family was treated you know, unjustly and he wanted to fight the system and oh, he wanted to make sure that. You know, good people were part of the system. I respect that, you know, but when it comes to spiritual things, you don't choose it. It chooses you. And so I and um, David and Moses and Elijah, all of us, um, you know, we just look. You know, the, the real ministers didn't choose pastor, prophet, evangelist, teacher or whatever, you know, like we they chose us. And so, and what it did is when it beckoned us, um, we were responsible for beckoning back. You understand? Many called, you know, few chosen. You say, what's the difference? Um, the difference is how you handle the call. Now, some people will die in the call because they will never graduate out of the call. They won't handle it. They won't handle it with reverence and handle it with care. Um, in that place of preparation, they shall be. And so you could talk all day long about a church holding you back or a person. I cannot see a person, a church, a, a building, a people holding back what the Lord want to do. I just cannot see that. I can't see that. I cannot see that. I cannot. The Lord even declared that he will make sure your gift make room for you and bring you among great men. Like, like I cannot see uh, all the excuses people have for failure. I, I just don't see those. And so pain comes and it should. Like I let things do what it came to do. Pain came to cause for my life change. Then I said, okay, well, make the changes, uh, you, you know, uh, which is contrary to the attitude of America who won't let 9-11, they won't let AIDS, HIV, herpes, COVID, or anything else change. It's, you know, like, it, like it's something deep rooted in the American fabric that fight against things that have come to make change. Uh, one of the reasons is America is a melting pot of all kinds of uh, religion uh, and all kinds. I would consider atheists, uh, if, but that's his religion, you know, uh, you know, uh, things of that nature. And so um, it, it's all kind of things that fight the move of God in America. But individuals in America, you, you understand, um, 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 which we are, um, um, we can um, we can carry ourselves like we want to. And so I allow pain to, to do what it came to do. It, it, you can easily see someone who had to break up with someone or had to divorce someone. 
and now the person they broke up with or divorced that person is doing very well today they they as the older people would say they got their act together they're working they're in a healthy relationship um they're treating someone with love and, and respect now you can say wow i let that get away and i would say to you not necessarily so because you left because of abuse you left because of of, of, of um lies and cheating and adultery and fornication a domestic violence you got out of a situation you needed to what you don't know is the pain that it caused this person uh, the wake-up call that they got because of you you know saying well i'm ending this that was their wake-up call to get their life right to, to do something different if it had if this person would not be there if they would have stayed with you because for some reason you were not the one to you know to get them going you, you know like i believe people who meant for each other uh, should be for one i believe their gifts should kind of fall on each other some and i also believe they should be able to help one another you know encourage one another you got all these people on the internet that want to be uh, inspirations and motivation motivational speakers and all of these things uh, well so start with yourself and in your own house you, you know what i'm saying and, and so people together should be able to push one another uh, since you couldn't get him right since you couldn't get her right then it had to be you know now let me make sure i make this clear immaturity and um and procrastination laziness that's not the same as domestic violence lies and cheating and bringing outside babies in the house and stds be careful of walking away from someone that you're supposed to be with because you think that they're lazy or you think that they procrastinate or they're just immature but one of the things you're there for is to help them get going that's i don't care if you're a male or female you, you know that's one of the things you the, you're there to do to encourage them and inspire them like my mom was not a hitter she didn't spank and we whoop i was inspired to do things for her because of because i loved her because it, you know she didn't curse me out ever never but i don't want to displease her or hurt her and so you can inspire people with your presence you can inspire people you're supposed to be with you know you can inspire people and so and so that's a difference in you know you know you have to be careful walking away from you know, someone because you think you you know because you think they should be further along you know uh, for for a minute uh first lady and i was visiting a house ministry and with, with a woman of god who was well she was a she she was a gifted woman um but i didn't know because of my um ignorance in the spirit that she was off you know but i learned late but nevertheless she was a gifted woman and we walk in one day and sit down and she comes in and she says to first lady but we're not first lady now we was just al and shirley you know she says why are you giving my son a hard time if he want to go to work come home and sit down and watch the basketball game let him do it you don't you don't control him he has a right to work and come home and sit down and breathe and watch the basketball game well I, i'm thinking yeah i do right i shouldn't have to argue about that i you know well but my point of saying that is that you, you have to let people you have to let god do what he's doing and know what's god's job versus yours you know in any kind of relationship girlfriend boyfriend fiancés definitely you know married couples and so and so you, you in the process of that um you, you know you don't break up or separate because of those things but over here you have a license and it may be why someone got it together because you you cause a certain level of pain in their life
and they needed it, you know, and, and, you know, and, and maybe you did too, you know, because um, um, it, it, you both should have grown in the, in the process of the, of, you know, of the circumcision, of the separation, of the divorce. You, you should have grown. And, um, um, and, 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 and everything is going to start as, it, as we progress from this. You're going to see a, a lot of things or almost everything as it relates to um, of, uh, conflict resolution is going to start with a conversation. Uh, whether it's a self-conversation that you may say, how can a person have a, a conflict with oneself? Well, when you look in the mirror and you say, wow, where I am and what happened is all because of me. Well, you can have a conflict with that within itself. It, once you know, had I listened or had I chose different or had I handled that, it, it, what I did is what brought me into the conflict. Now I have to deal with that. I, now, now, guess what? I need a conversation with me. And I want to invite the Lord into it because all a man's ways are clean in his own eyes. But a just weight and balance is the Lord. And so with this conversation I need to have with myself, um, I need to resolve this inner conflict in myself. Uh, I may say, um, uh, like many people have said, I've said before, I'm never doing that again. You know, this is my last thing. And, and, but I say it and mean it. And what I do is I may say and I vow it. Because when I vow it, I know now is a wrap. Like I don't, you know, now that's it. You know, um, sometimes I'm talking to a first lady and Mari, and I and I and I said I vow, and I get ready to vow, and they both like wait, 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 what you know. <laughs> but I know once I vow it, it's a wrap. You know, and so and so it, it starts with with a conversation. That conflict resolution with that mom, you know, and her daughter, with that daughter and her dad, as much as you may not want to to have that conversation, is this a conflict that needs to be resolved? And remember, at the end, peaceably, that's the key. Um, not not anything less than than peaceably worked out you know even if you say but I, i'm trying it's not working we need a mediator then you need a mediator uh, like um you know because what some of us are going to run into and please understand this is we're going to have to retrain someone else's brain and if you say what does that mean that means that they're used to the old you um, who may have blown things out of proportion you're always talking you know or you're always sharing or it, it, so it's almost like here he come again here she come again you're going to have to retrain their brain that you know that I want a different outcome and there were times that I, I, I didn't care if the outcome ended in anger or ended in strife contention or if we walked away you know and we didn't even speak again for a couple of years you know some people are like that well when you want to resolve things you cannot do it with the same brain by which you got there and so in saying that then you have to retrain their brain and retrain their ears to this new you or this this way you're coming about this situation now because they're used to you and so, I, and so, it's nothing to say. Oh no, I don't want to go there. We don't do well. We don't do well. Now, 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 I've done this. First lady would tell you, we don't do well with this. We don't do well with this. I'm not even trying to hear it. We don't do well with this. Let's not even start that. Well, how do I know that the same person is walking up to me that have walked up to me for years? Maybe it's been a change in her. Maybe the conversation not going to be like it's like it has been before. I don't know what my body does is prepare me for this perceived situation. You know, you know that's that's where they get that's where the body get that fight or flight from. This I, I'm either trying to run from it or I'm trying to fight in it, right? You know, and and and, and now we know it's not about when. Uh, w-i-n about winning 
you know you, you know it's not about that and so um and so you have to re retrain the brain of some people that you have to deal with uh if you all have not been in your old community for a while and the and the last they heard of you or when you moved you were a certain person look how they treated naomi in the bible like naomi naomi you know like why are you calling me naomi can't you see god have de dealt bitterly with me don't you know i'm not the same person who left here call me myra but God have dealt bitterly with me. They they only knew her by my um, who, who they knew last. You know they didn't want to allow her fatigue and darkness under her eyes. I mean, they didn't want to acknowledge that. Over is this not Naomi? As they ask, you know, wow, is this Naomi? Like, like you know, and she just said, well, "Let me help you out." Naomi dead. I'm bitter. I'm, I'm, I, I left with a husband and two sons. I'm coming back with nothing but one daughter-in-law. I'm not who I used to be. Well, that can be from, in, from, you know, we can flip that. Like, were you not angry? Were you not quickly, uh, you know, uh, quickly uh, um, wounded? And didn't you wear your feelings on your sleeves? Like, like were, didn't, were, you, were you not the person who would blow things out of proportion? Could not control your emotions? Constantly crying or hollering or in church, but also a curse you out? Like, aren't you that person? Well, when, when that's what they know of you, when that's what they know of you, you have to retrain their brain. Aren't you the person that can get pushed over? Uh, like, aren't you the person who don't hold a voice? Like, you don't keep a posture of strength? Well, I'm going to retrain you. I'm going to retrain you. With, uh, with uh, knowledge, uh, with wisdom, with understanding, with skill, I'm going to retrain you. And sometimes, you know, that, that, that's how they have to be. Now, I want, I want to make sure we have an understanding of something. Um... Uh, we, we mentioned for a second before we go where we're going about the, the, the basic four types of behavior. And the reason I want to talk to you about that really fast a little more is because when you understand assertiveness um, on that next level, of bold or confident. Now, what I want you to do under the sound of my voice, when you hear your perceived um behavior i want you to write it down if you feel like that's me i want you to write it down if you hear more than one thing that's you i want you to write it down now assertiveness this bold or confident assertion acting in bold self-confident manner the problem with assertiveness behavior is oftentimes it is declared by positively and often forcefully or aggressively. Assertiveness constantly demonstrates the existence of oneself. Constantly speaks of one's rights. Those, those are your I and me people. What one deserves. I, me. I love me some me, and I'm going to let you know what I deserve. Then you have the non-assertive person who does not express feelings, needs, and ideas. They ignore their rights and allow others to infringe upon them. This behavior is usually emotionally dishonest. So they're not true to themselves. It's dishonest. It's indirect, it's inhibited, which means unallowed to be free or spontaneous, and self-denying. The non-assertive person often let others choose for them and end up feeling disappointed with themselves and angry with others. I'm disappointed in me, but I'm also angry with you for, you know, taking advantage of me. Or, or, or choosing for me. They can be described at best passive, at worst as a doormat. They choose this behavior to avoid unpleasant situations, to avoid tension, to avoid conflict, 
and to avoid any confrontation. Now, I learned from my Caucasian brothers and sisters that we look at things different. I'm from a neighborhood that if there was a confrontation, it was a physical interaction and a verbal abuse getting ready to take place. When I get in the workplace with my Caucasian brothers and I hear my supervisor say, we have a conflict. It's something we need to confront. And I'm thinking, mm. so they confrontation and how they handle conflict is from the neck up. Well, I'm from a place who handled it from the from the from the fist in the mouth, you know. The same word, you know, we have a conflict. The same word we need to confront things, but a different way of looking at it, a different way of how they see it. You understand? And so, and so this non-assertive person. Now you may not you may not believe this, but this assertive person and non-assertive person, if if it's in the heart, if it's true, you know, you you you, you also you know about the boy who cried wolf. You, you also know about people who, as they say, uh, you know, uh, sell wolf tickets or write checks they they can't cash. It, it, they appear to be assertive, but they really not, you know. But it shows up. Well, these behaviors follow you everywhere you go. Uh, they follow you in the kitchen. They follow you in the front room. God knows they follow you in the bedroom that a non-assertive person would never allow him or herself to express themselves in the area of love or love making the way they want to because they non-assertive. So they constantly may be displeased in that area and it ain't the partner, it's you. The aggressive behavior, expressing your feelings, your needs and your ideas at the expense of others. Now, you may hear yourself in more than one place that this aggressive person, they express their feelings and needs and ideas. I'm going to say how I feel, but at the expense of others. I met my, my you know, I, you know, I believe in, uh, you know, uh, being transparent. And I met my auntie's house, you know, and I'm, a, I'm in grade school. And she's going on and on in a derogatory way about my dad. And I'm listening to her. But I don't, I don't know how to check into my emotions or my feelings. You know, I'm just listening to her. And then my older cousin or her son says, Mom, stop. Please stop. You're hurting him. Look at him. You're hurting his feelings. You don't see you're hurting his feelings? Well, my auntie is very aggressive for one. And at that time, I was very passive. That's, even if I wasn't, I don't talk back to elders. Well, you know, I have no, I'm not, I have no, even to this day, I have no response to an older person. That, that's not what I do. Um, I, I'm not trained to do that. I don't do that. And so, had he not said that, I would not have noticed, am I hurt? And this aggressive person is bullying me or beating me up. And having a conversation about me, about to me, about my dad. I don't care what anyone says. You can have the worst parent in the world and still love them. You, you know, you, you still love them. And so she's beating me up about my dad. That she didn't mean to. She was just, she was just venting. You know, I love my auntie. She was just venting. I got a beautiful auntie. She just, she just a, a tough lady. You know, that's all to it. And so, and so, and so she was expressing herself. But he loved me. So let's make sure we understand we're not we're not talking about love. We're talking about behavior. You know, so don't get that mixed up with love. You, you know, because a person hurt you don't mean they don't love you. And so and so and so standing up for oneself but ignore the rights of others, they may dominate or humiliate other people. While this behavior is expressive, it is also defensive, hostile, and self-defeating. The aggressive person tries to make choices for themselves and for others. They usually end up feeling angry, self-righteous, and guilty. I would say or preface that and say if they have a conscience. Because some folks act like they don't have a conscience. They use aggressive behavior to vent. 
their anger, and to achieve their goals. At least for the present, their behavior usually end up turning people away, and they end up frustrated, bitter, and alone at the end. Then the last is the passive aggressive, where they're expressing their feelings, needs, and ideas indirectly or in an indirect way. Uh, my um, uh, my instructor he pointed out how the, he said, you know, he said, you know how the wife burns the chicken on purpose, or how the wife burns a hole in the clothes on purpose. He was that kind of guy. When really what she's trying to do is is express herself but the wrong way. And I don't know. Okay, I get that. Okay, and so in indirect ways, not up front. A person who holds in feelings to avoid conflict and then express them in an inappropriate way at a later date. They use the silent treatment and a lot of sarcasm. They use language to cut or give pain. They do, those are your people who you say things like, I know you're not talking, you know, uh, or, 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 they, or they use this sarcastic way of making sure you know that they remember what you did, that they didn't confront the right way. They use manipulation or what I call sneaky ways to get revenge. Or they may turn their anger on someone or something else not involved in the conflict at all. They may become upset over trivial matters apart from the main conflict because the anger is still present. Now, I'd rather have it present than, as you know, going under you know i'd rather have it present but but still since it's not dealt with here's a situation where a, a person uh, messed up money or they say i'm coming straight home and it, but they go to walmart and their spouse is having a fit and i'm thinking well, what's the big deal but i know it's an underlining thing going on here and so I peel this orange, I cut open this apple, I got to get to the core. In the core is adultery. In the core is, you know, whatever I find in there. Now, what he does is everything she do, it take him back to the adultery. He may not say it, but he do. And so he would treat a situation where you said you was coming straight home. I know I stopped at Walmart and Walgreens. He had blow that out of proportion because the feelings are still present. If they haven't been dealt with. It, it, and, 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 from, and from the naked eye or from a, 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 a like a, a, a pure ear, what's the big deal, brother? Well, the big deal is every time she do something or lie. Every time I think she's lying. Every time I think she's not being honest. It take me all the way back to the adultery. Now, he may not know that until it's pointed out to him or he's or, or you allow him to revisit those feelings that he experienced, whether he have suppressed them or denying them or not. But, I, but we recall those feelings. You know, well, it's showing on his face, you know, anger, you know, something's showing your face and in his body, you know, uh, in his voice, we go back there. Now, now, now I know how some people are. Uh, they don't want to be re-injured. You know, they don't want to be re-hurt. So they don't want to, they don't want to get triggered. And so these are your flight people who, and your avoidance, you know, they run from things like this. And so in the process of it, you know. Uh, because every setting we have like this, uh, things show up in the spirit while we dealing with it. And so if you if you hearing me and, 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 and you feel the, the left side of your head talk to you, let it talk to you. If you feel your body like um, is in that experience, you're in a safe place. You know, uh, um, uh, uh, I get it, though. So, you'll know uh, in the process of it, in the process of it. When things are still present, any little thing will trigger you. And then you say, how long would that happen? As long as it's not dealt with. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, die like that. Now, people who teach this have always taught it like, 
or, uh, you know, or, or some forms like this, have always taught it as if you need to know who you're dealing with. Like, like right where you are, say, I need to know who I'm dealing with. Just, uh, I don't have to hear you just say it. I need to know who I'm dealing with. But I don't just teach it that way. I also need for you to know when we're dealing with you, who we're dealing with. So I don't need you to just know, looking at me, who you're dealing with. I need you to also know as I'm looking at you, who I'm dealing with. Because it's one-sided, unbalanced, and unfair for you to keep thinking how much you got to deal with, not knowing people got to deal with some too when you walk up with your unresolved issues. With your, with your non-assertiveness. With your aggressiveness, with your passive aggressiveness, like like it works both ways. And so, for me, sitting by myself and asking myself, "Well, I kind of got to understand that what people are dealing with when they deal with me, you know, uh, when, uh, like I'm an introverted, uh, um, separated, consecrated alpha male." Like I kind of get what you what you got to deal with in dealing with me, but at the same time, I need to be have sympathy and be empathetic about also what you got to deal with in dealing with me. Like like I like I know what I'm dealing with, you know. Like when I look at you, it, but but it's not balanced if I don't know what you're dealing with. You, you know, um, there are some of us. Let's be honest, we're not for everybody. We're not for everybody. You, you, you know, we it's a hand-picked people. Inner circle, close to us. It's a hand Some people look like they can get along everywhere they go. Now, I'm not that guy, and I don't care. Because woe unto them when all men speak well of you. I expect some people to speak unwell of me. You know, like it's part of my walk. It, 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 you know that's just how it is, but 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 the Lord wants us to know also what people have to deal with in dealing with us when things are not resolved and not right. You, you know, like 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 how fair is it to not look at that coin from both sides? Because what we want is this: we want peaceful reconciliation now some of you all you found yourself in more than one place you might have found yourself in the non-assertive and the passive place you might have found yourself in the assertiveness and the aggressive place and if you're honest you know now like okay i could be a bit much or um i could be a bit too passive you know, I could let some stuff go that I should address, you know, that later I wish I would have, you know, you know, like, like you got to be honest. You, you, you know, like I, it's times I probably could shut up and listen. Like I wouldn't be in this chair if I didn't know how to shut up and listen. That's why when, when, my, when I elder preach at our church he he said i want to make sure you all understand your pastor did every single thing we t we asked him to do but he said told that we told him to do my pastor said to me in front of first lady when he was sending me out making me leave he said all the years you've been here you never gave me one problem but he said it in a way to let me know he has had a lot of problems and I was just glad I wasn't one of them. It's amazing how this world is rotating and how small it is. I end up in a consultation with a beautiful young sister. And we're going over issues after issues after issues. And I had never seen her a day in my life. And two hours into the conference, into the consultation, I look at her. And I think I know her. And I just, I don't know her. Someone else brought her to me. Let me just work with her. And I continue to work with her. 
in that third hour, I look at her and say, I cannot deny this. I know her. And then I say, can I stop you? What's your dad's name and your mom? And when she gave me their name, I said, I know you. I said, I have in this office somewhere a picture of you when you were six. She said, what? I said, I know you. I know your parents. I said, um, some of the things you're talking about, I know exactly why they have it. Um, I, I know why your dad left you and your, your mom. I know why he's in another state. I know why your mom, the way she is. I, I, I know why you're here. Like, I, I don't, I, I know you. I gave her, you know, I told her, I told her, I told her what I knew. She cried. And I did my best to help her. Um, she, she was in her 20s at that time, whatever. When she left, I fell on the floor and wept. Because I was glad because, because my encounter with them. Um, how can I say this? Um, before my partner shot himself in the head, he, when he called to thank me for helping him and spending time with him, he hung up and called another gentleman who was her dad and told him things about his own wife and about the gentleman's wife and said, I know this for a fact because she's pursuing my partner, Al, and he mentioned my name before Cyrus. He hung the phone up and shot himself in the head. I was so glad when she left that I didn't have to apologize to her for putting my hands on her mom, for sleeping with her mom, for being the reason her dad left. Like, I never thought that she would be in my presence. I never thought, I, you, I, you, I never thought that one day she, I would be pastoring and she would be, she would be coming in for a consultation. I, I never thought that. And so, um, in this world of unknowns, and you never know what you got to deal with. Um, Let me just go back to this. You 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 want to you want to know that when we walk up, people dealing with something just like we're dealing with when they walk up, and the, and and we want and 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 and, and we want it's, we want to get to a place where as much as we can, we can live peaceably with all men. That's that scripture said. Um, um, with, with understanding that it, it, it may not, it may not work itself out. See, some of us are going to see, it's almost like learning something and then taking it from the pages or theory to, to practice and then not work as smooth. Do you not know some of us may have to, uh, have to apply these skills to someone with an addiction? Now, 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 one thing about an addiction is people with addictions, they're alienated and isolated and almost always unavailable emotionally. Now, imagine trying to work out a conflict with someone that the conflict started before the addiction. And now you're trying to get resolution in a conflict with someone who is who is now uh, alienated and isolated and emotionally unavailable. And you trying to say, oh, now I learned skills. I learned how to handle things. I learned like to humble myself and have empathy. I learned how not, you know, about fight, flight, you know, freeze and, and fine. I learned about, you know, I have to face some things head on, but to have empathy. I, I know now how to breathe. I know now how to, um, you know, make sure I stay in the moment. You know, okay. Okay do it do it with a person emotionally unavailable do it do it with a person with an addiction do it do it with a person who now have have, have alienated and isolated themselves go, go do it and so it's you're going to see it's a little different 
and that but you're responsible for yourself yeah yeah you're responsible for yourself uh let's go here and then we and we're not gonna we're just gonna end it with this last part um which is non-verbal communication and how they play a big role in conflict resolution how non-verbal conversation play a big role in conflict resolution uh, you know um uh, uh, Minister Alfonso, uh, Minister Zone, uh, 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 share with us that testimony you shared with me. How just randomly you you, you walking in the love of God and you just spoke to a couple of men at your job, and and they it, it's just in passing. You didn't know them; they didn't know you. And how later that showed up. You have to unmute yourself, sir. Yes. So I'm trying to think, um, man, yeah, we should yeah, you said good evening, gentlemen, and kept walking. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, good morning, I'm walking. sorry. So, oh, good morning. So, yeah. so I think it was uh, the situation uh, in maybe 2010. Um, I was working in the uh, drug testing unit and uh, which I started working in that unit in 2009. So I, after being a janitor for a number of years, and the Lord blessed me with my first promotion, I went from being a custodian, a janitor, to drug testing technician. And where the office was located, uh, I had to enter one building and then walk through like an outside, like an outdoor corridor to get to the other building where, my, where uh, our office was, the unit was. So I walked in one morning um, and sober, thank you, Lord. Cause so we're talking like a year and a half or two years into salvation. So I walked in one morning sober and I was headed to, uh, headed to work. And when I entered the first building, I got to the first floor, a man that I didn't know saw me. Well, a man that I didn't know who was the chief of staff was talking to a officer who was a part of the um, who was a part of the um, uh, janitorial detail, but the off, but the but he was an officer, and so um, so so when I walked up the flight of stairs and I saw them in the hallway and I said, "Good morning, gentlemen," and I made a quick right and I cut through that this small little room and I hit the outside corridor and went on about my business. So that was I think in two thousand nine, maybe two thousand ten, in two thousand eighteen, I got an email from a gentleman introducing himself instructing me to give him a call so i gave him a call he says um hello my name is i'll just say john smith my name is john smith i understand you expressed an interest in um working uh, uh coming over to to the operations side of things and uh we have a position for you that might be uh, you might be interested in now when he when i got his email his email came like in, like I said, in 2018, in 2015, I was told I had a position that never manifested because layoffs took place and all kind of stuff. So here I am, three years later, like man, God, I, I, I don't know. I, and and I was dealing with major, major turmoil on my job in the position, the, the drug testing room. So anyway, get this email from John Smith. Call him. He said, if you're still interested in coming over to the operations side, um, we have a position for you. You start. This coming Monday, and this may have been Thursday or Friday. So I said, okay, absolutely, I'm still interested. So I went and met with him, put on slacks, shirt, tie, and went to his office, and I sat down, and he was just looking at me. And he said, um, and this, this is what I expected. And I'm just looking at him. He said, um, a few years ago, I was standing in the hallway talking to one of my officers. And this guy walks in and he comes down the hall. He says to us, good morning, gentlemen. And then he cuts through this little room and he heads out. And I looked at my officer and I said, who was that? And that person was somebody that was maybe a year and a half, two years into salvation. And God be glorified that the encounter took place. I had nothing to do with it. It's just all God's grace and mercy. 
Okay, and, and 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 that is that is the example of a of a verbal of a verbal communication that that we see it how it, it, it bears fruit. We we see how that how how that verb just being verbal, just just don't get me wrong, the spirit that came with it, but being verbal, we we get the importance of that that verbal communication, how it can open doors and close. Now and I wanted that because I wanted us to have the uh, like I didn't want I didn't know I wanted that until now so you know but but you know how we stay open in this setting I wanted that now or needed it because I also need you to know that nonverbal can be just as effective or just as important um, I don't know how many of you all saw the movie The Butler but the 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 Butler was a he was working in 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 a restaurant or whatever uh serving and a table full of caucasians was having a political conversation and somehow one of them asked him a question and it was less is more all day long he 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 knew what what quickly to say but also what not to say that a man later remembered him and brought him into the White House because they only wanted that kind of attitude in the White House. It wasn't just verbal, but it was also nonverbal that that that, that impressed the, this, the chief, of, the man who hired and fired at the White House. And so nonverbal communication can play a big role in what we call conflict resolution. The most important information exchange during conflicts and arguments is often communicated non-verbally. Non-verbal communication is conveyed by emotionally driven facial expressions, posture, gesture, pace, tone, and intensity of voice. The most important communication is wordless. When people are upset, the words they use really convey the issues and needs at the heart of the problem. Now, remember we said yesterday, yada, 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 yada. He never spent time with me. Yada, 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 yada. Yada, 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 yada. She won't let me touch her. Yada, yada. And how we as ministers who are in counseling have to listen to that noise and filter through it and understand what message need to that they're trying to convey but don't have the the poise and the skill set to do it now 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 what is being said you know now, now a lot of times people look and say like uh as someone faced that they're talking to and want to know like like what's wrong with you you know like what's going on with you but, you know, or how their body is now, you know, pacing and moving. These are all these non, these nonverbal things that's going on. When we listen, what is felt, when we listen for what is felt, as well as what is said, we connect more deeply to our needs and emotions and to those of other people. Now, I'm in a consultation and uh, say to a man, you know, you, you, you ever cheat on your wife? You know, you ever cheat on her? And he says to me, no. And I said, no. And he said, no. I said, you sure about that? I mean, are you sure? And then he just looked at me. No one says no, but a liar. Minister Alfonso, when he was just talking, he kept looking up to his right as he want to recall the, the same everything to, in details and truth he never once had to keep looking over his left as he make up something and so in all this halo language which is all this body language nonverbal language you hear a whole lot you you must hear what is being said as, and also what is being felt when we're in the middle of conflict, paying close attention to other person's nonverbal signals may help you figure out what the other person is really saying. This would allow you to respond in a way that builds trust and get to the root of the problem. A calm tone voice 
a reassuring touch or an interested or concerned facial expression can go can go a long way toward relaxing a tense situation now let me say this i was working with a lady and well it's like it started off like uh meeting her and then going to the car and later crying and like i i thought i was emotional when i got to my car and i asked the holy ghost who tears are these and i he showed me a lady face i only spent two three minutes with this lady i did not know her had just met her the next day i say to she speaks to me and i say to her um and i'm not gonna say i said at the right right time either but i said to her i cried your tears yesterday and she looked at me and, and she said huh i said after i met you i cried your tears yesterday when i got to the car i cried your tears and then she looked at me she said when they introduced me to you i had just hung the phone up with a lady i do not know telling me things about my husband i did not know she said i don't even remember your name because i was numb when they introduced me to you i said yeah and when i left i cried your tears now this progressed to me to her wanting to know more about me or can i help her or me helping her uh to the point that we start spending time together and one day i woke up and i was getting dressed for work and the holy ghost said don't hug her today just like this don't hug her today she's menstruating and you're hurting her i go to work and she walk up to hug me i said don't hug me just like that and she said huh i said we can't hug today I said, the Lord told me this morning, I'm hurting you now. Uh, that, that, that you're menstruating and you're really... Now, he didn't say this, but prophetic people allow to fill in the gaps by faith. I learned that from a pastor named, named Shabak. Uh, we walk it all by faith. I said, I'm hurting you now. I'm not trying to hurt you. I said, um, and you're sensitive, you're hurt, you're vulnerable. And the Holy Ghost said, you're menstruating. And that, and that I'm hurting you now, touching you. She stepped back and looked at me and said, and I'm going to be honest, I'm on my cycle app. And I said, all I'm saying is no hugging right now. Like I'm not trying to hurt you. Like I'm not trying to make us something we're not. You know, I'm not trying to do this. You know, um, and I, I apologize if, you know, if, if I'm sending the wrong signals or whatever. You know, I'm not trying to do that. But, but it made her, if I could say, more into me that I would have empathy and care. And so um, I said that to say, w with these touches, these, with these uh, uh, reassuring touches and with these uh, shoulder touches and these hugging and, you know, and embracing, um, you do have to be careful with that. Um, you know, I, I, was, I was working with a with a person who was struggling with homosexuality, and, uh, and and the Lord wanted me to start making sure I understood that that he struggled with that this person struggled with wanting a relationship with a man, and I, you know, and that for me to respect that, you know, uh, and watch some of my you know touches and some of you know. You know, some of you know, and some of the ways I was, you know, going about the relationship, and I did, you know, I, I backed up some, and you know, then I had to talk with them, you know, to make sure we were on the same page. Well, I'm saying that to say to you that you know, um, it, it, you, you learn a lot, but in the midst of it, with boots on the ground, also you all who you know have to, um, you know, resolve a conflict with someone. Remember the role you play in their life, as well as the role they play in yours. You know. And, um, and, ma and make sure that um, that we we're about what we're about, and and, and that it's, it won't go, it's, it won't be misleading. Let me say, let, let's just say you, you you need to deal with with an ex, husband, ex wife, ex boyfriend, whatever, and that is something about that situation you really want resolution in. Well, you have to make sure that they know 
you're not reaching out because you want to rekindle but actually you may want to say you know um i was working with a young lady who um had um molested her sister when they were little and i was working with her and one night she was really having a hard time with it and i said to her call your sister just call her while i'm with you call her and tell her you sorry i said you can't get past it you know like i had my pastor pray for her uh, i had my spiritual father pray for her i was helping her she couldn't get past it i said just call her up and, and tell her you sorry she calls her up her sister answers the phone um, I, I hear the whole conversation. She said, I'm not calling you, you know, you know, basically to waste your time. I'm calling to tell you I'm sorry for what I forced us to do growing up. <clears throat> she says to her, um, to her, um, you know, and I need to fix this. Like, I'm sorry. Her sister says to her, not say, what are you talking about? She said, you know what I'm talking about. And I can't, I can't live like this. I need you to know I'm sorry for what I did to you. Her sister says to her, you didn't do bleep to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Then she says, okay, you want me to spell it out? Do you want me to spell it out? That Now now I'm like, hey, whoa, whoa, bring it down. Bring, but she can't bring it down. She said, I'll spell it out for you. I'll spell it out for you. I'm sorry for forcing you into sex with me. I'm sorry. For, and, and, and they elevated it. And I couldn't get it back in, under control. The sister calmly said, that BS in the past, don't call me no more with this BS, that blank is over and hung up on her. The sister I'm working with started running down Madison Street as fast as she could, screaming, I should not have listened to you. I should not listen to you and i'm driving in at 10 30 at night on madison street with all these prostitutes and pimps around trying to get her back in the car before the police thought i was there to, you know with the wrong motives and so in saying that um some things can go off the rail uh sometimes conflict resolution is not smooth uh, sometimes you lose control of the setting. Hopefully you won't or, or you know, but, but you always want to make sure that, you know, that the end result is peace in, the, in a peaceful way. If they have to cross over from nonverbal to verbal, you, you have to be ready for that. If it escalates, you know, while you're trying to deal with a situation, if you if you if you if you if, you, if, it's, a, if it's a person who will listen to this one day. And they go to, and they decide to go to their spouse and say, "We never really walked that thing out, that adultery out." And it bothers me that I never really said sorry to you, or that I never really showed you how hurt I was for hurting you. Their spouse may not be ready for, you know, they and the, and, this, and the spouse non-verbal communication may be saying everything that their mouth won't say. You know, uh, you know, and maybe when they do open their mouth, they say, I never really wanted to deal with it because it would have forced me to have to deal with what I'm getting ready to deal with today with you. And that's my adultery. You never know where you're going when you, when you have a plat when you set a platform for sharing. Once you establish a platform for sharing, everyone involved can share. And so in the process of that, you know, I do want you to be mindful of conflict resolution that involve touches, hugging, you know, uh, you know, kissing. Um, uh, I was dealing with a couple and it's, he said very little. They were not a couple anymore. They were co-parenting. And, and we were there just because of, for the child, not for them. But it, but he uh, he spilled it over into their relationship, their former relationship. And at the end, after we prayed, they embraced each other. And I got so uncomfortable that I saw her trying to break his his hold on her. After about ninety seconds, she thought that's enough hugging. 
where he would not let her go. And I thought, okay, she's trying to get a, unloose and I'm uncomfortable. Well, that's that curveball and that conflict resolution, you know, that they we were not there for that, but they took us there. And now trying to make sure this thing's still in the right way. Um, he wasn't ready for holding her. And she definitely didn't, wasn't trying to receive it like he was giving. And so in the process of that, you, you never know where, where things can go when you start talking. Now, now you may say, well, what's all going on here? Uh, uh, people who have to resolve conflict to have a better relationship uh, people who one day would be involved in helping people deal with conflict resolution like a lot of things go on when you when you sit with someone like me you know you hear it like you're supposed to hear it uh, uh, now let me talk about um, uh, your ability to accurately read another person depends on your own emotional e awareness the more aware you are of your own emotions the easier it will be for you to pick up the wordless clues that reveal what others are feeling. Uh, you know, sometimes Minister Amari would say things like, um, read the room, read the room. You know, uh, sometimes um, uh, um, Elder Golden and Elder Farley would say, uh, learn how to blend in. People need to learn how to blend in. Well, all of these things are true. And if people had more emotional awareness, they would do better at it. Now, I want to talk about humor judiciously used, how it can effectively diffuse conflict. Humor, a joke at the right time, in the right way, can help in a healthy way diffuse conflict. Once stress and then we're going to pray, I believe. Once stress and emotions are brought into balance. Listen, once stress and emotions are brought into balance. Once we have alleviated stress, once we have calmed the emotion, once we have balance there, your capacity for joy, pleasure, and playfulness can be unleashed once we've dealt with the stress once we've dealt with the emotions not before it's inappropriate it don't fit before studies show that you can surmount adversity as long as you continue to have moments of joy joy is deceptively a powerful resource Humor plays a similar role when facing conflict. Now, keep in mind, a, a situation that could have really been whatever, we have gotten the stress, you know, balanced. We've gotten the emotions balanced. Now, we can maybe, if that's part of our personality, add a little humor to it. It's not now out of place. You can avoid many confrontations and resolve arguments and disagreements by communicating in a humorous way. Humor can help you say things that might otherwise be difficult to expre express without offending someone. Now, I remember that right before I got sick, I had climbed up to 200, maybe 200 to 200 and one pounds or somewhere, I know I had hit 200. And I walked past uh, First Lady uh, to do something. And she slaps me on the backside. Damn, boy, look at you. And she laughs. Now, I'm not laughing. I'll give her a look. She, Damn, boy, look at you. <laughs> and when she laughed, she brought my, you know, my disposition kind of like, uh, so I hit her with it. Don't worry about it. I know how to handle this. I didn't know I was getting ready to turn a corner and be being sick and come out of it 223, you know, you know, whatever. But, but she let me know, what? you getting up there in humor. 
therefore I, I was able to handle it without you know like getting defensive or you know or saying something back you know what i'm saying well well humor can avoid many confrontations and resolve arguments and and disagreements when done in the right way humor can help you say things that would otherwise be difficult to say however it's important that you laugh with the other person not at the other person that you laugh with the other person not at the other person and so if i'm still in stress if i'm still in my emotions if, I, if i'm still trying to articulate to you how i feel and you think some funny then all you have done is offended me and made me feel as though what i'm saying is not that important to you or that it, you know now some of you all let me say this to you and some of you all who communicate by way of phone, you know, and, and you know, something like that, you know, well, one of the things people need you to do is listen. Another thing they need you to do is every so often interject a, uh-huh, oh, okay, okay, oh, yeah, I see. Because what they hear on the other end is that you're engaged and that you care. You, you may not need you to share. They not may not need your advice. They may not need you to talk. They need they're letting you know how they feel. Sometimes you you want to say how you feel, but today give them space to say how they feel since they instigated the conversation. If it don't go, you know, let, let's let them get that off their chest. And, and sometimes in your in your too silent non-verbal communication and they can't see your face because you're on the phone you know or, or you know and all that be careful trying to express yourself in texting because you can try all these emojis and lols and all that but be careful with that because it ain't time for that some things it, it, you need a face-to-face -face or at least verbal and this generation stink at that so you'll know but nevertheless sometimes a uh-huh okay I, i'm listening go a long way now, now, because if the nonverbal com communication that's allowing this to happen, not the verbal, if that makes sense to you, just your uh huh, okay, I'm listening, means okay, I hear him, he's engaged, he's listening, you know, uh, I don't have to say, are you listening? Are you still there? They, they, I know they're there, you know, I know he that he's paying attention, I know he's involved, that he's taking it serious, yeah, but, but I don't need him to talk to me or tell me what to do or i need to him to let me you know because what if i'm talking to you about a conflict that i have not with you but with someone else but, but i need you to listen so your non-verbal communication is important but you hold off your humor as long as i'm up here and up here you hold off your jokes and your humor you know till we till we bring it down it, 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 um, when humor and play are used to reduce tension and anger, reframe problems, and put the situation in perspective, the conflict can actually become an opportunity for greater connection and greater intimacy. We know intimacy to be what it is, you know, close. You know, and that's, and that's only if humor is something that should be you you know you understand because the whole conversation may end with and now some people they're just like those kind of people they jokey people they have a lot of humor going on you know but it just may not be appropriate in this conversation or 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 not right now you know what i'm saying you know, and so and so you do have to make sure that your character, you know, and your personality line up with, with what's going on, if that makes sense to you. Tips for managing and resolving conflict. Listen for what is felt as well as said. And write that down. Listen to what is felt as well as said. Make conflict resolution the priority rather than winning or being right. 
like this is like manage this is like managing and resolving conflict in a nutshell you listen to what is felt as well as said you make conflict the resolution you know like the priority rather than winning or being right you know focus on the present that's hard for some people because remember sometimes uh, the conflict in front of us take us back to the unresolved issues or take us back to what we haven't dealt with or take us back to the to to what you don't know is present but it is the anger is always there you know the rage is always there with an unresolved issue it just needs something to, to give it space to to express itself okay pick your battles uh, conflict can be draining so it's important to consider whether the issue is really worthy of your time and energy now this is tricky here because if you're dealing with someone who have already decided is worthy of their time and energy and you're looking at it saying listen that ain't nothing I don't know what you're talking about. That ain't that, it, it, it's not that serious. You are actually starting a new conflict. You're actually creating a new conflict. It's almost like this is where we have empathy and humble ourselves and say, you know, for me, it's I don't see it that serious. But if you do, I mean, I said I'll pay your money back in two weeks. I didn't have it. I gave it back to you in three. I thought we were good. I, you know, I mean, but it, it, I didn't think it. I mean, but if you still want to talk about it, I, I guess we're talking about it. But I, I didn't. I, I mean, I didn't think it was that. You know, I, I gave it back to you before you needed it. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I said I was sorry for bringing your car back without putting gas in it. it I, you said okay. I thought we were cool. Like. Now you're telling me the next morning you were late for work because you had to stop at the gas station. I didn't know you had a had a hidden, you know, conflict. You know, I, I, you know, I mean, it's not that big to me, but I see it is to you and I care about you. So therefore, I mean, let's talk about it. I, you know, because you rather do that than create a, a conflict on top of a conflict. Now that take you that take humility, you know, because. You deem it as something that is not worth talking about. And you're looking at a person who letting you know what it is. And, and you know, um, I, I, I mean, uh, I was at work and this person came to me and said, have you noticed every time I, our co-worker go to the fax machine, they only pull off, you know, with, or the printer. They only pull off their, what they print it. Where when we go, we pull off everyone's thing and hand it to them as we walk past. I was like, well, I, I don't care, you know. She said, but I do. Like, like I have a problem with her. Like, 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 I, I, like all day long, we handed her her things off the printer. She go right over there, pick through everybody's things and pick her things off the printer and walk away. Uh, that's a conflict you have. That's you. Like. I respect it, but I don't. I don't care, you know. But you tell her, go to her. Tell her. Well, it seems like nothing. Um, no offense to anybody on here. I dealt with conflict working with eighty percent women, like eighty to eighty-five percent women that I hadn't dealt with working with men. You know, it was just different. They had they had always something going on, and then you you may say. I disagree with that, but they did. They all, It was always something that I didn't experience when I worked with mostly men at, at Aronson Furniture and at Network Rental. We never had issues. Like little things, you know, like, hey, bro, grab the paper out the printer while you're walking past. And, oh, sorry, bro. Like things never was, you know. Then I worked with 80% women and every day it was something else. You know, well, but you may, you know, know why. But anyway, um, you know, um, if it's not important to you, you know, um, it, it, it don't mean it's not important to them. And so you, you pick your battles, uh, you know, whether the issue is really worthy of your time and energy. Now, let me say to you, if I love you, it's worth my time and energy.
the paper, shy, withdrawn, you know, uh, goofy, all the things you want to call a person. You know who you're dealing with. And you understand. And so in the process of that, when you when you walk in when you walk in empathy, you know, when, when you sensitive and, and walk in empathy, and you're looking at someone you love, so you'll know. And they're talking to you about something that's not that important to you, but because you love them. You pause the game, you cut off the TV, you sit down on the phone, you know, and you notice that people who want to be taken serious, when they're in your presence, they say things like, look at me. Why do I have to look at you? They want to see you receive it. They want to see, even if they don't know why, they want to see you care. They want to see you receiving it. They want to see you lock into them. They want to see it. Now, some of us, you know, may have the skill set and the ability to transfer that through text and through a phone call. It's the more they don't. But in the present, look at me. Do you care? Now, remember when you intermediately involve, you're like not all the way. You, it's not like you you are engaged, but you but you're intermediately engaged. Remember we talked about this. You're not fully engaged. You're not out of it. You're in it, but in the middle. Those are your people that why you're talking to them. They're still playing the game, or they're still texting, or they're still watching something, or they're still writing something. That's a sign that they they may be listening. They involve, but not a hundred percent. But not that important. So then you say, "Look at me. Let's look." You know, like sometimes um, Minister Martin may say, look at me. You know, and I say, oh, good. Got you. Now you got, you got me. You got me. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, now she know I'm listening and she know I'm, that I'm sharp, you know. But at the same time, she want me to look at her today. Like, look at me. Oh, got you. Now, that's a small price to pay for someone you love. Even people talking to you, they can tell on the phone if you somewhere else. And they may ask you, are you are you listening or are you doing something else? Now you can get away with that without lying by simply pressing pause and saying, No, I'm not doing anything else, you know. But they felt it, they knew you wasn't. If you really love or have true empathy, you invest. Like I like a like, no excuses. You invest. If you say, I'm with a person who never do that, I'm going to say because they never fully care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lie about it. They, you know, you may say, why? They, they don't love me? What does love have to do with this? That, that don't mean they don't love you. It may mean that you may be the kind of person that have that low self-esteem characteristic that blow things out of proportion. You know, you don't. You may not know spilled milk is not. You know, it's not a car crash. And so, and so, they train for your. You know, your emotions. They train for your outbursts. They train for you to take things and blow it out of proportion. Who's is the same people who loses perspective easily? They're the same people. And so, if you, when you grow, you have to retrain them that you're not that person who still blow things out of proportion, you know. It loses perspective easily. You see? Because sometimes you're the reason why they don't take you serious. You know the boy that cry wolf. You, you see? And the man looked at Minister Alfonso and said, this is what I expected. Visually, you know, from, you know, like, like this is what I expected, you know. You understand? And so if you train people, you know, in, 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 your, in your emotions and, and in your, you know, um, uh, low self-esteem qualities, you know, if you train them, that's how they, that's how they do you. You know? Mm -mm. 
But, but I said to someone, I said to some people, I said, every time the, the married couples go out, you know, and, and Minister Marcus and, and, and Daughter Marie was taking us out in different things. I pointed out to a group of people, Minister Marcus don't talk over a whisper. But when he speak, you listen. And so we on an outing and we were ready, we were ready to leave. And the group was basically saying, the women in the group was basically saying they were ready to leave. And so um, daughter Marie wasn't ready to leave. I mean, let me talk for a minute. And so we said, oh, okay, you know, she wasn't ready to go. A minister Marcus, who don't talk over a whisper, say, um, I think it's time to go. She looks at him and goes, oh, I want to stay. He says, yeah, babe, let's go. And by the time she got her coat on, they were laughing, talking, and we all were walking out the door. He don't lift his voice of a whisper. They love each other. They have empathy for each other. They have sympathy for each other. And the verbal and, and uh, verbal co communication just fit. Her ears trained to hear his low tone. His ears trained to hear her. And they work it out. Deal with they train you have trained them. You that's how you broke them out, you know. And, but you still you pick your battles. You decide it's something worth talking about. You I mean it from you. You can't you can't do anything about me walking up saying I gotta I'm gonna talk to you about something that I think is important. You know you just gotta have empathy for me. But as far as you walking up to me. Choose your battles, like you you know, like you you know what I'm saying. Like, make sure it's worth talking about. That it's worth you know our energy. And when you're dealing with certain people, uh, like married couples who are in that hard place, uh, couples, just girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, fiance, whatever. When you all in a hard place, and every time one of you all start a conversation and go into an argument, less is more. Music, DVD, radio, I don't care. Whatever can allow us to get to this movie theater and back in peace. Because we know right here, we every time one of us opens our mouth, we rub with each other the wrong way. So we can get back on track or get, you know, or grow up. Less is more. Okay, maybe you don't want to surrender a parking space if you've been circling for 15 minutes. But if there are dozens of empty spots, arguing over a single space isn't worth it. Studies show that the number one people involved in road rage are women. I thought that was so interesting. But then I thought it only makes sense. It only makes sense. Be willing to forgive. Be willing to forgive. When you talk about managing and resolving conflict with the least amount of stress, be willing to forgive. Resolving conflict is impossible if you're unwilling or unable to forgive. Now, let me say this before we pray. How would I know to say sorry sometimes if you have perfected hiding how you feel? There are people who don't know they hurt your feelings in this life or to what extent. So if a person don't know they said the wrong thing or hurt your feelings, it may not be worth talking about. Let me say that to you. If it's a person in passing or whatever, or a co-worker, you know, okay. Long as it don't happen twice. But people in your inner circle, it's almost like um first lady gave me a bag of popcorn not long ago. 
it was a it's popcorn with chocolate in the center. Now, I like popcorn. I love chocolate. But I found out trying to eat it, I hate them together. And so she said uh, one day, oh, how did you like the popcorn? How did you like it? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't have to have it. I don't, you know, I don't have to have it again. She said, oh, okay. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Thanks, but you know. Well, why would I continue to let her buy that? Instead of just telling her. I hate it. Didn't like it. Well, why would you continue to foster feelings that are now festering out of control because you won't even say, oh, by the way, that joke about my mama hurt my feelings. Or you said something to me I need to talk to you about. It hurt my feelings. I know you don't know. Now I'm saying to a, a couple I know, I see the couple, I say, oh, wow, your hair is so pretty and it's really, you know, it's, it's really growing like that. It's a couple, older couple, I know them. She said, thank you. I see them two weeks later. I say it again. Wow, your hair is really growing in. It's so pretty. And thank you. Two more weeks later, they walk up to me in church. I say it again. Her husband pulled me to the side. He says, now I know you don't know that every time you see my wife we don't, we don't want it to be like in your face. We're adding pieces to her hair, but it, every time you, like it's naturally grown. I, now, I know you don't know that that's weak. Cause I could tell you don't know. I said, I didn't know. He said, no, I know you don't. I, I know you don't know. He said, for one, it's human hair. It's the good stuff. And we're putting pieces in little by little. So it'll look like it's naturally growing. I said, oh. He said, no, I'm just telling you because I want you to stop saying to her, like, oh, your hair is really grown. Like, I don't want to bring attention to it. Like, but I know you don't know. And I said, I'm so sorry. I did not know. Like, I, I you know. He said, I know, I know you don't. He said, I, I look, I'm not mad or upset. I just, like, like, telling you, you know, like, so you don't keep saying it. You know, I said, got you. Because I didn't know. Well, why would he allow me to keep doing that? He know I don't know. Like, he, he could tell. And so instead of that being something that go into a conflict or something that one day we, we have a hard time resolving or I thank God that he knew I didn't know, you, you know, uh, and, and, and told me, you know, had a talk with me. Now, when you are a certain person, you don't mind a person having a talk with you. One of the qualities of people with low self-esteem who have these insecurities going on, they are always uncomfortable in certain settings. They, they, they speak before you get through talking. They stop listening in the middle of your sentence because they got something to say, you know. But they don't even hear to completion what you're articulating because they can't wait to let you know how they feel. They stink in relationship. But they don't know it. They're hard to deal with. How do I know that I was them? Rejection was my strong man. And it broke out, you know, insecurities and fears. When my dad rejected me, it broke out insecurity and fears. That was my strong man. Rejection. So you can come up and say, I bind insecurity and I bind fear and all that. If you didn't get to rejection, the strong man was standing there. And you do have what we call demon groupings, but that's another day, you, you know. So nevertheless, you know, you know, um, uh, arguing over certain things, is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. Uh, again, be willing to forgive, resolve the conflict, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, uh, if, you, if, if you're not willing to forgive or unable, you can't resolve the conflict. Resolution lies, which means like laying down, it lies in releasing the urge to punish. Resolution lives in, in the area, uh, uh, like it lies in releasing the urge to punish. Remember we said um, yesterday, I believe, that people who live 
waiting for someone to pay for their tears and to pay for what they did to them have stopped living. Your life is on hold. You know, because you're waiting for something that you think you deserve, you know, and you, you, you know, you, you, that you have stopped yourself living. Well, resolution, it lives or lies in releasing the urge to punish. Which, which can never compensate for the losses and only adds to our injury by further depleting and draining our lives. And lastly, know when to let something go. Now, let me say to you, don't you tell me, let it go. Because all I hear you doing is minimizing my pain and minimizing how I feel. I have to tell me, let it go. But don't you walk up and say, let it go already. Like, you need to let that go. Because I feel as though now you're not sorry. I feel like you're not empathetic. You don't care. And I feel like, like it's not as important to you. So it's easy for you to walk up to me. Like, imagine the guy who, the, the guy who shot my son, you know, five times. Imagine... In the courtroom, if his family say, they just need to let it go. They, they just need to let it go. Y'all just need to let it go. I mean, it's happened. It's done. You can't change what's been done. Just let it go. Imagine him looking behind and saying, I don't care how they feel. They need to let it go. Just imagine. They won't have that chance anyway. I, I ain't, they'll never see me. But I'm just saying, Imagine. Someone who hurt you or, or, or wounded you or offended you, you know, your dad who, 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 who you know, who abandoned you, your mom. Like, I've dealt with all kinds of people. I dealt with people who moms let a man come in and touch them for a bag of, of, of cocaine. I done dealt with people who mom made them prostitute. Like, I, like I've dealt with people. Imagine them saying, you need to get over it and let it go. And so, and so. It, it, that thing is we need to let go but I don't need you to tell me to do it like I may need to let it go you know but but not the person who hurt me tell me to let it go okay I, all right so I cheated I cheated but she needs to let it go I've heard this in a consultation lady call me <laughs> um I, a, a, a couple call me to the house I, I say, first lady, come go with me. We go to a couple's house. And while we're there, it's revealed she's in, um, um, he, he called me because he found out his wife was in adultery. So first lady, go with me. We get there and he's heartbroken. Like, 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 um, um, like um, idolatry heartbroken where his God has did this to him. And He's depressed. He's crying. Um, he's hurting. And he don't only want me there to, res to help. He also want me there to make her tell him how the sex was and what they did. I did not know that. The first lady heard me say, hey, stop. Whoa, wait. That's not why I'm here. As a matter of fact, you don't want to know that. He screams, yes, I do. I want to know. He looks at her and says, you tell me. I said, oh, no, 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 stop. For one, you way off, bait, you way off. Studies show people who cheat don't cheat with the person the same way they are with their husbands and wives. So for, get that out your head right now, that it's like you and her, like, like, you know, get that out your head. Two, that's why, that's not why I'm here. I'm here for, for resolution. I'm here because you all, you called me here because you don't want to divorce her. Or else you would have just divorced her. You have Thank okay.
Pastor, you froze. So let me know when I'm back. You back. What's the last thing you heard? Um, I could hear you say you called, but they couldn't. That ain't helping me, First Lady. What's the last thing you heard? When you had set them down to talk, you were getting ready to talk to them. And he, you told him, this is not what you want. Yeah, yeah. That's, this is not what you want. This is not what you want, brother. I said, for one, uh, uh, the way when people cheat, studies show they do not cheat with their lover in the same way they have relationship with their loving spouse. I said, so you get that out your head that she was with him the same way she'd be with you. Get that out your head. Two, you, you didn't call me here for that. You called me here because you don't want to divorce her and you want it to work or you wouldn't have called me. I said, so you want me to help you? Let me help you. A week, maybe not even a full week later, she calls First Lady and First Lady puts me on the phone. She says, I just want to know how long do I have to deal with all this crying and all this depression? Like he need to get over it. I said, listen to me. Don't call on me again. Like this. I said, his God dropped him off the stairs tower. His God broke his heart. His God put him in this place. You, he, What he thought of you was on such a high level that he, he put you on the other side of God. I said, I don't know how long it's going to take him to get over this. But, but how dare you call and ask how long do you have to deal with it where someone else, you wouldn't have to deal with anything but just give you over to it, you know. That he's trying to stay. I said, so don't, don't call me again and asking me how long the husband you hurt going to be crying and fighting depression. It, it, it spoke to her level of ignorance to how damaged he was and how special the relationship was to him. Oprah Winfrey asked Whitney Houston, did you not understand you are the voice she says, but many people do what I do. The many people using drugs, you don't know about Oprah. She said, yeah, but they're not the voice. They were not the voice. Like, like you, Whitney Houston, you have the voice. Like, like you don't get that? Whitney Houston didn't get it. Swift didn't get it. You know that? How long before he get over this? How long? Like sometimes conflict resolution have to take its time and how dare the people who bring who put you in the position to then command you come out of it. You may say, but why would they do that, Pastor? Uh, let's be honest. They don't care. They're empathetic. It don't mean that much to them. Now you do now you do what you want to do with that. But that's the truth. It takes two people to keep an argument going. Now, this is class, right? That's not true. It takes one person to keep an argument going. And, and the devil could get in it and they go all night long. So you'll know. It takes one to argue. In my world, when I looked at it and I looked at my own life, it takes one to argue. It takes two to argue back. If we're going to go back and forth, it takes two. But one person can argue until the sun come up and won't stop. You could have left the bedroom and went to another part of the house because they refuse to argue with someone who won't stop. If a conflict is going nowhere, you can choose to disengage and move on. That's easier said than done. If you see, okay, we're not going to, you know that thing, let's agree to disagree. That work with coworkers, 
that work with neighbors, that work with, you know, you know what I'm saying, in passing. Very seldom do that work in a marriage or a relationship of intimacy. Let's agree to disagree. Here's a wife saying, I want to I want my mother to keep our children tonight. Here's a husband saying, I already asked my mom. Here's the wife saying, but I want him to go to my mother's. Here's the, wife, the husband saying, but I already asked my mom. She wait on them. They both know it's 630 and they have to be somewhere at 715. Well, let's agree to disagree or well, let's do it. Then they look at each other and say, but we still have to deal with where are the kids going. Let's agree to disagree. I disagree with you that they should go. And I disagree with you. Let's agree to disagree. Got you. Um, we still got to be somewhere in the next 30 minutes. We still have to be somewhere in the next 45 minutes. So how is agreeing to disagree going to work for them? How, how is that going to work? Now over here, you know, this is my spirit side. I say at that time. You, you got to go back. You got to go in the order of God. God, Jesus, man, woman. Like somebody got to have take the lead. You know, uh, 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 and you may say, well, in the spirit, there's no male or female. There's no Jew or Greek. There's no black and white in the spirit. Okay. If you are that mature, then the one with the heaviest anointing, the one who say they hear from God, go with that person. But guess what? You got to do something. Because in the next 30 to 45 minutes, you have to be somewhere. So how is agreeing to disagree going to work with you? How is this going to work? It's not your co-worker. It's not your neighbor. Intimate relationships got to have resolution. And so you can't afford for that conflict, you know, to be blown off and to disengage and to say, let's move on. You got to have the skill set, the empathy, the humility to work it out. And whether you know it or not, I've watched for years. My mom, a college graduate, my dad left school in third grade. I watched for years that alone create conflict. Just in how they saw life and understood words. When you equally yoke, you can work things out better than if you're not equally yoked. And I'm talking about in in, in, in every area, like, you know, you, you know, in every area. And so if I walk up and say to you, listen, <clears throat> we're not going to suppress this, you know, we're not going to suppress this. And you look back at me and say, talking about, and I say, oh. You, we're not going to let, let like let this go underground and be hidden, you know. Uh, again, what the heck are you talking about? Look, we're not going to sit on this. We're going to bring it to the front. Let's talk about it. Like, I have to speak a language you get. You got to speak a language I get, right? And so, therefore, you know when to let things go, but also know when we when you can't. We got to we, we, we gotta do something. You understand? And, and so in saying that, uh, we're going to conclude um, um, tonight, um, maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Now, now for people who don't know us, uh, for years we had Thursday night Bible study. I'm trying to pray about what day a week now. See, I can see now that this summer or whatever, that the Lord would have us. I was trying to give it back to Minister Alfonso and, and, and Elder Farley, uh, but I don't know what the Lord is saying, but I know now he, he got us back in this kind of setting um, where we would, and he wanted us to talk about health. He wanted us to talk about finances. Uh, and so we have to, uh, he also wanted us to talk about people to choose and people to avoid. And so in saying that one day next week, we, you know, we'll start back like our weekly Bible study, but it, it'll be, I can't, just, I don't know what it'll be. You know, I just know now we back on, right, PPC? And you are always welcome to invite people and um, and things of this nature, you know, to join in with us. Um, you know, and, um, and, and so we'll go as the Lord lead us. 
and we thank God for Jesus. Um, we're going to have um, Minister Mari prayers off, and we're going to have um, uh, Elder Paula you know, um, to, uh, to, to uh, end us with um, uh, worship in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and, uh, and I think um, that, um, you know, this is how I get when I don't, when I want to make sure that I don't miss anything so you'll know. But people who know me know that. You know when i get like this so so anyway um yeah um i have respect for what the lord is doing and, and who you all are and so minister mari uh you know pray for us and then elder paula send us home by the name of lord jesus christ we repent for all of our sins lord from the day we were born to right now we thank you oh lord for Bible study. We thank you, O oh Lord, for this time and space. We thank you, O oh Lord, continuously for this fast. We thank you, O oh Lord, for how you continue to pour into us, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you care about what we are concerned about, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, for how you're strengthening us holistically, O oh God. Oh Lord, we ask that you continue to create in us a clean heart and create, renew a right spirit within us, oh Lord. We pray, oh Lord, that you see the Jesus in us that's trying, oh God, as we learn these things and try to apply them, oh Lord, as we are work, works in progress, oh God. We thank you, oh Lord, for your patience with us, oh Lord, and your long suffering, oh God. We pray, King Jesus, that you continue to strengthen us and help us, O oh Lord, that we can live lives that are pleasing to the Father, that we can have interactions that are pleasing to the Father, that we can have communications that are pleasing to the Father, that he would get glory out of how we navigate life, that he would get glory of how do we and how do we interact with people and manage our emotions, that he would get glory out of things that may seem small to us, but may be major to him. We pray, O oh Lord, that you see the Jesus in us, O oh Lord, see the Jesus in us that is trying, O oh God. We could continue to surrender and yield, O oh Lord, to open up and be teachable, O oh God, to know that we have not arrived, but we're still learning. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the for the creativity, O oh God, that you continue to pour into us is never, we're never there, you know. We always have a room to grow. And we thank you so much, O oh God, for blessing us as a church family to be able to continue to grow and learn, O oh Lord. I bless you for that. We touch and agree right now and pray that you will have your will and way, O oh Lord, uh, for our night, O oh Lord, and and um, this weekend, O oh God. We touch and agree in advance for your will for the service, O oh God, and that you would um, continue to get your glory as we um, have these next few days of the fast, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We pray you bless our sleep tonight, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. We touch and agree and pray for our unsaved family and loved ones, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given jesus christ his son and now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what 
the Lord has done for us. We give thanks. Oh, yes, we do, Lord. We give thanks. Oh, yes, we do, Lord. We give thanks. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. We, I thank God for Jesus and for his people everywhere. We are dismissed. God bless you. Love you. Thank God for Jesus. Mm -hmm.